La Casa Muda, or The Silent House, was a 2010 Uruguayan film. It was operated or filmed on a $6,000 budget and is allegedly based on actual events. Um, the film itself actually was filmed over the course of maybe four days or so. The camera used was a Canon EOS 5D Mark II. Uh, this was actually the exact same model that was used for the American remake. But the um, film itself follows uh, Lara, who plays the lead, as well as uh, Wilson, who plays her, f or who is the father. Um, they're basically just, uh, they've returned to this old decrepit home there, fixing it up for repairs as the owner wants to sell it. Uh, they are, of course, warned to stay off the second floor as it is not safe to go up there. Eventually, at some point, uh, because they do decide to spend the night so that they can continue cleaning, eventually at some point, Laura does hear noises coming from upstairs. Her father, Wilson, does go up there to find out what is going on. And that's pretty much when all the weird stuff starts going on. All this, um, she begins feeling like she's pursued. Um, there's this very dark, menacing atmosphere. And from there on, the story is pretty much told through body language, movement. Uh, there's no actual dialogue until towards the tail end of the film. Um, so she does begin uh, this journey to try to uh, fight her way or get out of the house. Eventually, she does make her way back in. She uh, finds her father. He has been injured. And um, little by little, she does begin unlocking the secrets of the house, what did happen there. Uh, as well as her own path. The original does seem a lot more darker and menacing than the American remake, which is just plainly called Silent House, which was released in uh, 2012. Uh, this time the lead character is named Laura. She has returned with her father and uncle, and they're just making repairs to a summer home. Both films do open up similarly. Um, Laura, as she's walking up to the home, is sort of crossing a creek. She's in a, a desolate area. And it seems very symbolic of her journey throughout the film, um, maybe her uh, subconscious. Uh, you know, she's in an isolated area, she's alone, and um, you know, she she eventually does make some some large discovery. the The original opening is similar, uh, although um, it does focus more on a wide landscape type angles rather than actually focusing on the character, but. Um, the three are staying there. They are fixing up the home. Um, it's not really certain if it's for sale or if they're just fixing it up just because they're tired of it looking all crappy. So in this version, Sarah's father falls down the stairs. Obviously, it's safe to go up there in this version, but he falls down the stairs. He's injured, and for some odd reason, rather than sticking around to try to help him, uh, she feels that there's some sort of intruder in the house, so she goes to this great effort to try and flee and get out of there as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, every single door in the house is locked. She eventually does manage to make her way out. She runs into her uncle, who is, who has returned. He just sort of went off to gather supplies or some odd. And um, they eventually do make their way back into the home. And this is pretty much when all hell breaks loose. Obviously, Sarah's father is injured. He's been tied up. He's uh, been beaten. And um, this is also when we make a discovery about Sarah herself, is that she is not exactly as she seems, nor are her uncle and father. And um, gradually her memory does return to her. She realizes what happened to her in that house. In the past, she discovers um, a, a piece of herself that had been deliberately forgotten and with good reason. I definitely don't want to spoil it and say what did happen, um, but it's definitely interesting storytelling. I wouldn't say it's maybe the best film in the world, but uh, it does manage in turns here and there to keep your attention. Uh, but it's definitely an interesting twist. Um, I went into this thinking that it was somewhat of a, a haunted house type story and you wind up getting some very dark psychological elements thrown at you. So it's, it's very interesting. Um, the endings of course are slightly similar, but I think the original is a lot more darker, a lot more sinister. Um, you do get to see Polaroid photos in the original, whereas in the remake there's somewhat of a flashback sequence, but I think the fact that what happened, the fact that it was implied in the original is what makes it a lot more darker and sinister, uh, so it definitely makes it a lot more sickening to, to actually have to realize and, and deal with this. But um, 
definitely an interesting film. Uh, if you haven't seen or heard of it, I would definitely take a look. Um, obviously, if you're a stickler for originals, you might want to start there just so you can have a decent comparison. But they're pretty much almost the same film, turn by turn, with just a few slight differences here and there. Um, even though, theoretically, the script for the remake was just based off of two viewings rather than reading through the script and basing it off of that. Yeah, definitely an interesting movie. Um, I would definitely give it a look. And um, that's pretty much all I have for you today, and I will talk to you later.